Hi everybody, in this video we're going to be covering everything that you need to know about scalar functions and aggregate functions in SQL. So to be able to demonstrate these functions, we're going to be using the data table that I have set up down here on my screen. You can see that I have an ID column, a first name, a last name, the age, income, and the job of five individuals um, listed down here. If you want to follow along and you also want to recreate this table, I'll be leaving the SQL code that you need to execute down in the description below, so feel free to execute those statements if you want to create this table. So let's start off and talk about scalar functions. So scalar functions yield one output for every row of input. Let's go and have a look at the very first scalar function, which is the uppercase function. So let's say we have some data which we want to turn to uppercase. And so let's say we want to turn all these first names that we have here to uppercase. So in order to do that, we can select U case, and then pass in the first name as an argument into the uppercase function. And we still have to specify the table where we're taking the data from, which is from the members table. Now let me just quickly pin this tab. And if we go ahead and then execute the statement, you can see that the individual names from our original table have been turned to uppercase. Now, the same thing also works if you want to turn all the, thing, all the individual names to lowercase. You could simply change the U to an L, and you'll be able to see that all the uppercase letters, so in this case, it's always the first letter of the first name, will be turned to lowercase, as you can see here. So those are some the first two very basic scalar functions. And as you can see, for every individual row of input that we had, we got one output. So we had five names in this case. And for each of these five names, we had one output value. Moving on, let's have a look at the length function. The length function is quite helpful because it allows you to determine how many characters are um, within a string. So we can select and then we write length and then we input the um, uh, column name. So we're simply going to take the last name and we're also going to do this from the members table. So as you can see over here, we have uh, five uh, last names. And what, what, what values do we expect now? So we can see Oliver is six letters, Gates is five letters, and so on. So we expect to see something with six and then five, and then you can see the rest of the names all have four letters. So that's the length function. And there are some other um, scalar functions that we also use. Another one that is quite popular is the mid function. And this mid function allows you to output certain, certain characters from a string. So let's say we take the first name and we want to output the first two letters of the first name. So we're starting at position one of the string and outputting the first two letters. And we're going to do this from the members table. You'll be able to see that we have the first two letters of each of the individual names. So the first name was John, James, Kelly, Alf, and Charles. So we have John, James, Kelly, Alf, and Charles, but only the first two letters. And of course, you can also play around with this. So if you want to output the first three letters, just change this to three and you'll have the first three letters. And you can also go ahead and you don't necessarily need to start at the very first letter of the first name. You can also 
choose to output from the second one and you will be outputting the first three letters starting from the second one which makes a little less sense and is a bit confusing over here but it's something that you can do so let's just go and put this back to the first one all right now the last scalar function that i want to cover is the round function which allows you to round values just as the name suggests so let's go ahead and select then we're going to write round and then within this round we're going to add uh, the following select statement we're going to write select avg which is actually an aggregate function which we're going to get to know in just a moment so bear with me on this one and we're going to take the average value of the age from the members table and in addition to that, when we um, use the round function, we have to specify how many decimal places we want to round to, and we're going to say we want zero decimal places. So let me go ahead and first uh, ex execute this select statement. So I've marked only the select statement over here, and I'm going to run it. So it's only going to run the selected code, and you can see that the average age of our members um, you can see here the ages and the average of, of, of this age is 31.6. Now you can see that I've added the round function uh, around this select statement and I've also specified that I want zero decimal places. So what I would expect is that the next uh, time when we execute all of this, it should provide the number 32 because it rounds up. So if we do that, that is exactly the number that we get. All right, so that is the most significant and the most popular um, scalar functions. Now let us take a look at the aggregate functions. And aggregate functions are special because they take values from multiple rows and calculate a single output. Now we have already seen our very first uh, aggregate function over here. I snuck it in before because over here we're taking the H column, so that's multiple rows, and we have one output which is the average value, which is in this case 31. But let's go ahead and write aggregate functions over here, and let's take a look at the individual aggregate good functions that we have. So let's start off quite simple with the average. So select average from members. Let me just copy and paste it in fact. So this is the one we saw just a moment ago. Um, the next thing that we can do is we can also specify this by saying all right we want the average age from the members table but we want to only take the average age for the people who have the job doctor. So over here you can see that we have two doctors in our list, Kelly and Charles, and we want to take the average age of 27 and 40. So to do that we can simply write where job, job is equal to doctor. And if we execute this you'll see that we get the average age of 33.5, which is exactly the average age of the doctors in our members table. The next thing we can do is we can use the aggregate function count, which counts individual entries. So select count and then star is going to count all the individual entries from the members table. So we know that we have five entries and that is exactly the value that we get if we use the count function. Now, how about we count the number of members that have an age that is over 30? So to do that, we can simply copy and paste again, and we're going to write where the age is greater than 30. So if we look at our table, we know that Charles is over 30. We know that Alf is over 30, that makes two then James is over 30, that makes three. So we know that the answer should be three, and that is exactly the answer that we get. Next up, let us have a look at the maximum 
um, function. The maximum function works just like the minimum function. So let me go ahead and simply demonstrate the maximum function because it's pretty intuitive. We're going to select max income from the members table. And this is going to simply select the maximum income in this list over here, which is going to be 90,000. So let me just prove that to you. It's 90,000. Now, outputting this individual number is nice and all, but how about we want to add some more data to our output? How about we also want to add a first name and a last name? So to do that, we simply can add the first name and the last name. And this will still give us the same result, but it's going to add the first name and the last name to our um, maximum income. Now, of course, we don't necessarily need to output the maximum income. We can simply change this to minimum, and it works just the way that you would expect. You can see that in our table, the minimum income is 50,000, which is still a lot of money, but that it's the smallest amount, and that is exactly why the um, minimum amount is displayed here. Okay, so that is the maximum and minimum functions. How about now we have a look at the sum function. The sum function, as you would expect, takes the sum across individual uh, entries. So if we select the sum of income and we do that from the members table, and we're only going to do that where the job is equal to a doctor. And so we see over here that we have two doctors, one earns 90,000, the other 70,000. If we take the sum, then you can see we get 160,000. That's um, the way that we would expect it to be. All right, then the next thing that we can do is quite interesting because we can group these entries quite nicely. Let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say we want to count how many individuals have a specific job. So let's say we simply select the job and then we can count the number of individuals in that job from the members table as always. And we're going to group, group by a job. Then you'll see that we have a small table where we have the number of individuals who do each of these individual jobs. So as you can see, we have two lawyers, we have two doctors and one engineer, and that is exactly what we get here. Two lawyers, two doctors, and one engineer. And how about we try and do this with the average income? So the question that we would ask would be quite simply, what's the average income for each of these individual job categories. To calculate that, we can simply write select, and then job, and then calculate the average of the income column from the members table, and group by the job. And once we do that, you can see that we have the average income of each individual job category. All right, that's going to be it on this video on aggregate functions and scalar functions. If it helped, make sure to leave this video a like and subscribe to this channel, and we'll see each other in the next video.